president's powers as far as the rest of the, the, the uh, city is concerned. And I want to talk about Willits Point. That area of the borough has um, gotten lots of praise and also some criticism. Do you support the Bloomberg administration's, uh, the, their administration's plan for Willits Point? And if not, what would you replace it with? Let's start with you. Um, I actually voted against the plan when I was in the city council. I was only one of, the, one of two people who voted against it. The city initially threatened to use eminent domain to take the property, and uh, I thought it was a disgrace. You had family-owned businesses there for generations who had to do the city's work, put in sewers, put in streets themselves. And then for the city to turn around and say, we're going to take it from you with very little compensation, I thought that was wrong. And I still think the city's action is wrong. Now, they finally acquired some of the property, but now they're, the property that they acquired, they're kicking out roughly 3,000 workers, many people of color, from their jobs, supposedly for economic development. Well, you have 3,000 jobs right there, right now. And every promise, every promise the city has made to property owners and to the workers, they failed to fulfill. What would be your alternative then? Well, I think, first of all, there has to be a real conversation with the property owners and the workers about what's going to go there, because the original plan was to develop the entire site. And then, but they couldn't do that because they didn't fulfill the transportation improvements. They lost in court. They're not doing that. So now, all of a sudden, instead of fulfilling the entire plan, now they're going to do it in pieces. Let's have a real discussion. I have the firmly believe, in, and I've talked about this for a long time, community-based planning. Right now, we do planning from the top down. We need to do planning from the bottom up and involve every single person in the borough of Queens what's happening in their own neighborhood. I want to change the entire land use procedure. I haven't been able to do that in the legislative position, but if I'm elected with the people's support in Queens, I'll be in the executive, and we'll make some real changes in how we do that and have a real discussion with the property owners, the city, uh, the mayor's administration, whoever the new mayor is, and obviously the work is there. But forcing your will on people is just wrong. Okay, Peter Vallone, your take on Willett's point. Well, Woolens Point needs development. It could not be left the way it was. And it couldn't be developed piecemeal because of the environmental concerns and because of the way the problems have been left to, to uh, foster there for way too long. Um, so I supported development there, but only after deals were reached and I waited until the very end with most of the legitimate businesses at that site. Now, the plan that they came to the city council with is not the plan that they are moving forward with now. They were supposed to develop Woolens Point. Now they've moved that development onto the, into the city field parking lot and they're actually putting the parking lot at Willis Point. That's not what we approved. I think they need to come back to us. They need to come back to the city council, and we need to hold them accountable. We need to do what the community wants done there, not what the mayor wants done there, not what developers want done there, but what the community wants done at that site. It's got to be done with import from the in, 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 uh, for, with the import from the community board. Um, it's got to be done with import from the people. Uh, but it, it, I think it needs to go forward. We need that economic development. It could not be left the, 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 the cesspool that it was, uh, but it it has to be done. Uh, it has to be done right. It has to be done the way that people want it to be done. Ms. Katz. It actually is back at the city council, and there is a huge debate on it right now. Um, I was the chair of the land use committee. When we passed it, we increased the affordable housing that is supposed to be built there. We created an infrastructure there, we provided for remediation, and I think all those things are important. Clearly in the borough of Queens, affordable housing is one of the most needed assets in the borough. Folks don't have a place to live when they create affordable housing, when we create affordable housing. Folks in the community many times cannot get into that housing, and it is a real problem in our borough. The interesting thing about Willard's Point is I was working for Borough President Claire Schulman, and we used to call the administration all the time about Willard's Point. It is horrible down there. There's no sewer system. The, the streets are not created in an infrastructure right now that the businesses are used, you know, can use properly. And, and really, it's not fair to have businesses down there without providing an infrastructure that is useful. And we tried for years to get that infrastructure there, and then all of a sudden, the administration comes in and says, well, it's a blight. Yeah, it was a blight. It never should have gotten there. Having said that, there's $400 million still in the budget to um, help place the businesses that are there somewhere else. But 
in reality, I do think we need to look at the whole park. We need to have some sort of over plan, overall plan for the entire park, but we should absolutely be creating affordable housing, and we need to move forward on some of that in the borough. If, if I can sort of add to this, first of all, the, the businesses there are complaining that they're not getting money to relocate. In fact, they're getting 30-day notices as we speak, and the affordable housing component has now been pushed off for, what, 15 years? I mean, that's a disgrace. If anything, the affordable housing component should be done first before anything else. But it really comes down to the city has acted uh, irresponsibly in dealing with the property owners in the community. And I've been down there for numerous rallies. And to be perfectly honest, I haven't seen either one of my opponents there. But I've been talking to the property owners for years. I've been talking to the workers. Um, and, you know, it, it really is a... Let's talk about trust. You know, there are a lot of people in Queens and, and in the other boroughs who really don't even know unfortunately, what the borough president does. They're not going to know what the borough president does from month to month. So one of the things that I've been talking about in the campaign is we all served in the city council at the same time. Let's talk about two votes that we all uh, did while we were in the city council. One, what I consider to be the most disgraceful action that the city council took in the years that we were in the city council, and probably ever, and that was to overturn the term limits. Okay, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna get to that at a different time, though. Let me stay on the on the we'll keep the focus on land use for a minute and talk about uh, the development of Flushing Meadows Corona Park. There are a lot of different views about what should happen and in what order. Let me start with you. I think that there is a large call from the communities on a soccer stadium. I like the idea of building a soccer stadium in Queens. I do, however, oppose doing it on Parkland, especially for a dollar is what they were talking about. And the conversation has changed, right? A year ago when I started running for borough president, the conversation was all about should it be on public parkland, should we have it in Flushing Meadow Park? Now it's a different situation. Now there's a very wealthy financer. It's, it's a partnership with Yankee Stadium. There's a way to actually look for other pieces of property in the borough, maybe private properties, but really as far as the public parkland, that's a, a real issue. Um, USTA just went through a very public debate and all the community boards voted and the council actually created um, a, an agreement on how money should be spent in that park. There's 16 workers at Flushing Meadow Park full time. It is not enough. And the fact that on 0.6 acres of property, the USTA can gain about $58 million and not donate $1 to the park, it's, it's a precedent that I think needs to be started, that the upkeeps of our upkeep of our parks are so important. One of the issues that always comes up in every forum that we go to is the fact that parkland is so desperately needed in our borough. But we create parkland through capital dollars, and then there's no expense money in order to keep it up. So this is the perfect opportunity to be able to do that as well. Peter Rillo. Oh, when it comes to Flushing Meadow, I was out from the beginning. Uh, when it comes to the uh, soccer stadium opposing that, that was an outrage to give uh, free parkland, 14 acres to a sheep for $1. It never would have happened in any other borough, and that's the point. Uh, the point is the parkland in Queens has been uh, has been neglected when it hasn't happened in other boroughs. And that's the excuse they used when they came in and tried to take our parkland. They said, well, look at the dilapidated condition. It said, that's true. How is that allowed to happen in Queens? Could you ever imagine Central Park being offered up for this type of thing and I'm saying, well, look at the condition Central Park is in. Our civic virtue statue was taken from us and put in Brooklyn when they said, well, look at the condition it's in. We have to fix it up. We have to use it, put it on private property in Brooklyn. Nobody stood up for that statue, but they said, but the condition was horrible. And now there's an ugly pit outside Borough Hall with graffiti and, and blue wrapping around it. Like I said, there'd be, there's nothing replacing it. But again, that statue was left to rot here in Queens. And we need to get our fair share of the park money. We need to get our fair share of, of capital money and expense money when it comes to new parks. Um, so I've, I've opposed the, the stadium. I support Willis Point. Uh, I support the um, uh, the U.S. Tennis Center only after, only after the community boards came out and put some conditions on which were by and large met with the agreement that we've made with the U.S. Tennis Center. The parkland is being replaced. More of it is being replaced and it's being taken away. Money is coming. Money that we deserve is coming to the county. Jobs that we deserve are coming to the county. So only after they worked with us and the community supported it, then I took a position in favor of the U.S. Tennis Center. And you? Well, I opposed all three projects from the very beginning. I think parkland is sacred. Um, you could always use the argument, well, we'll give parkland to this group, this commercial group, in return for some money. If you continue that argument down the 
around, you wind up with a lot of money and no park land. The fact is, if all three proposals, the USDA, Major League Soccer, and the Mets proposal, were to go ahead, half the park, 50 acres, would be lost. A real disgrace. Um, I think, you know, I'm not against the Major League Soccer building a stadium in Queens. Put it in the Rockaways. A lot of the Rockaway community leaders want development in the Rockaways. But to sacrifice Parkland for a commercial development, I think, is just wrong. And one of the things that I found out in researching this issue, which is very interesting, you know, we have what is uh, Albany legislation where you have to, you know, replace Parkland when it's taken. There's actually no law that says that. It's based upon court precedent. And once I found that out, I introduced legislation in Albany to not only put the core precedents into law, but I think if you're going to take away parkland, which should only be taken away in very, very important situations, replace it three to one, not just one to one, three to one, and replace it in such a way as whatever you're taking away, 13 acres, 20 acres for Major League Soccer, is replaced in one complete lot. Because what happens when you take away parkland, if let's say it's five acres, well, we'll put an acre here, we'll put an acre there, and the end result is the amount of people that use the park in the first place will never, ever use the little spots that are created. Okay, we are going to take a short break now. We're going to have much more with our Democratic Queensboro president candidates in just a moment, including our lightning round. And don't forget, if you'd like to join in the conversation, you can do that on Twitter. We're at Errol Lewis or at Road to City Hall. Stay with us.